So now we're going to move on to the live demo portion of the uh, of the pyrotechnic course. Well, live in that we recorded it a little while ago. Uh, this is not a training course, all right? This is a demonstration, so keep that in mind. Don't uh, think that when we finish this that you had uh, full-time professional training. This is uh, just a demonstration of the most common devices and what they do that uh, you are most likely to run across in your pyrotechnic uh, career. But there's a, a lot of devices uh, that uh, are in addition to what we're going to demo here today. So, notice that I am wearing safety glasses. Absolutely cr crucial, critical. Always wear safety glasses when uh, working with pyro. Um, going back to what we talked about in the course, is not if there's a malfunction, but when. And we want to make sure that uh, if there is uh, some sort of malfunction that you're going to be protected as, as best you can. So, first uh, device that we're going to talk about is the gerb. Gerb uh, produces a uh, spray of sparks, could be gold, could be silver, could be both, transitioning from one color to the other. Gerbs are available in a wide range of durations and heights, from as short a duration as a quarter second to a maximum of 25 seconds in duration, and from a low height of 2 meters up to 20 meters uh, in height, so a very wide range. But it just means that you can select uh, the exact effect to suit the venue that you're working in, whether it's a small room uh, for a wedding, a big room for uh, uh, a ballroom, or outdoors uh, in a garden. Uh, okay, so this is uh, uh, our first year. And on the label of the gerbs, it will always give you two numbers. It will give you, the first number is the duration, and the second number is the height in feet, because most of these are manufactured in the US. So this is uh, one times 20. So that's one second times 20 feet. Now this one has the E-match built in. Some do. Uh, and it is always the short duration have the E-match built in. And the reason for that is that because it is a short duration, the placement of the match head inside that gerb is crucial. So it can't, the manufacturer can't rely on us as technicians of inserting it in exactly the right place. So those are built in and uh, fixed securely in place. Now the business end, all the devices are marked with an arrow, um, and that is the way up, and that is the direction of the spark bloom. Uh, and you can see inside we have the choke, and as we learned in the course, the purpose of the choke is to restrict the uh, output of the, uh, the sparks, and it helps determine uh, how forceful the spray is, therefore the height of it. Next one. Again, another short duration. This one is, uh, is uh, noted a little differently. It's 1S65. Uh, different manufacturers uh, use uh, different uh, uh, labeling, so sometimes it can be a bit cryptic. But always the duration is first and the height is second. So this is one second in duration, 65 feet in height, or uh, 20 meters. So you can see, you don't want to mix the two up. You don't want to do a 65-foot gerb in a 10-foot ceiling room. It'll work, but you're going to be showering sparks everywhere. So. Another, another gerb, longer duration, 20-second uh, duration, uh, 20 feet in height. And this one does not have the gerb built in. Okay, The gerb comes, uh, sorry, does not have the e-match uh, built in. It comes with the E-match uh, taped to it and it is shunted but we're going to have to place the E-match into the choke. Again the, the short duration of the one second has the uh, E-match uh, built in. But as the duration increases uh, the placement of the E-match in the choke isn't uh, as crucial so uh, it's installed by ourselves. And in this case as the duration increases, the placement of the E-match switches to the top of the gerb. So to uh, 
uh, insert the E-match is very simple. We leave the shroud on, and we just have to bend the head of the E-match and just push the shroud into the hole of the choke. Now, don't spend a lot of energy trying to force that down to the bottom as best you can because this has to pop out. When the E-match is ignited, it's going to pop out the head of the E-match in that shroud and we get our wonderful spray. So as long as it's just in there securely so that it won't uh, fall out uh, with somebody walking by, but don't, uh, don't try to enlarge the hole or, or force it down. 20 second and 20 feet high. Now this is uh, a little different. It's called an ice gerb, but it is a gerb. Uh, this one is uh, 20 second duration, eight feet in height. Again, the arrow uh, pointing up. Uh, this one doesn't have a choke. And the reason being is that this is made with nitrocellulose and uh, titanium powder to give it the sparkle. Now nitrocellulose is flash paper. Uh, it's very different than these gerbs. These burn with great force and are very, very hot. Whereas this is a very gentle spark plume and uh, is not nearly as hot. Uh, this is a great type of uh, gerb to use for things like uh, uh, the first uh, dance at a wedding or a children's party or what have you, uh, because it, it is much more gentle. And because of its gentleness, it's not suitable for outdoor use because the spark plume will be uh, blown over or distorted very easily by, by light breeze. So indoor use only. And as you can see, there's no choke to put the uh, uh, head of the E-match in. That's because the, the nitrocellulose is exposed right here. And as long as the match head is touching the top of the ice gerb, it will ignite the uh, nitrocellulose and away it goes. Last example we have is a falls gerb. Uh, waterfall uh, is replicated with gerbs, and this one has the uh, E-match uh, built in and in, held in place with a uh, piece of tape. Now it's very important that if you're going to do a waterfall, you use a proper waterfall gerb and not any gerb. You can't take a 20 by 20 gerb and hang it upside down and uh, create a waterfall, well, with several of them. Because this choke may plug from the sparks coming out, and if it plugs, it will explode with great violence, and they can be very dangerous. And the reason it may plug is because the waterfall gerb is specially designed uh, with a different choke, a much wider choke, so that uh, it is much more uh, difficult and virtually impossible to plug um, and therefore explode. So again, I'll emphasize again, uh, if you're going to do a waterfall, make sure that it is a waterfall jur specifically designed for the falls. Flash paper, flash cotton, uh, flash string, all nitrocellulose products. Now, those are the only products that anyone 18 and over can buy in Canada and use without a pyrotechnic license. All other pyrotechnic devices, you need to have your pyrotechnic card. 
but these devices have been used for uh, years uh, by magicians in their act and, uh, and uh, for special effects. Um, they're a real treat to use because they are uh, so safe to use, uh, very little hazard, burn with, uh, with very little heat, um, virtually no smoke and no ash. So it's not to say that uh, you couldn't uh, ha have a, a problem with them, but compared with the other pyrotechnic products, um, these are the least energy of them all. So here's the sheet of flash paper. It is ordinary uh, uh, tissue paper, uh, but it's been nitrated. It's been treated with nitric acid and then stabilized. It's, it's a very important process to make sure that the paper is uh, stabilized after to remove all traces of the nitric acid. Otherwise, it will continue to nitrate and uh, possibility of self-combustion as the uh, chemical reaction continues. Nitrocellulose products are also unique in the world of pyrotechnics and fireworks in that it's the only composition, the only device that not only is stored wet, uh, but can be uh, wetted numerous times, then dried out, and it uh, functions perfectly. Virtually every other device and chemical composition of pyro and in fireworks is completely ruined uh, when it gets damp or wet, but not nitrocellulose. And in fact, for safety, nitrocellulose, or sorry, flash paper, flash cotton, flash string is stored in plastic Ziploc bags uh, with a, just a little bit of moisture uh, so that it is damp and then it is completely inert. Uh, nothing can uh, make it burn. And then to use, you just take it out of the Ziploc bag and let it air dry for a couple hours. I would not recommend popping it in the microwave or using a hair dryer to dry it. Let it air dry naturally and it's ready to go. So let's just see what this does. Just going to use a small sheet piece to start with. So uh, as you can see, uh, I'm going to light it with a lighter. Uh, again, virtually smokeless uh, and uh, no ash. And it burns relatively slowly when uh, it's in a full sheet or uh, flat. But when you crumple it up, combustion increases significantly, the speed of combustion. Now this device is, is called a, a smoke cup uh, for uh, magicians. It can be concealed in the hand and it has a, a flint wheel. And usually we uh, use this device with uh, uh, flash cotton because it uh, ignites much uh, easier, but it does work with, uh, with flash cotton. And a flick. Boom. Beautiful. Now, the only other thing that we can do to liven up the use of uh, flash cotton or, or flash paper is sparkle additive. Uh, the sparkle additive is not uh, explosive. Uh, it is powdered uh, titanium, very fine powdered titanium. And when you add titanium powder to any composition, it will produce white crackling sparks. Uh, very, very fine. Don't know if we can see this, but one bottle of uh, sparkle additive will virtually last you a lifetime. So we will do the same square of paper. And this time we'll add just a little bit of sparkle additive. Just a little dab. It goes a long ways. And let's see if this will ignite for me. Ready? Now we have a much brighter color. We have some white in there and of course the white crackling sparks. Um, you can see that uh, some of the sparks did land on the tablecloth, but they are very short lasting. And if you waved your hand through that, it would be uh, similar to waving your hand through a sparkler. You might feel a little prickle or whatever, but it's not going to uh, uh, significantly burn. So there we go. I don't have any uh, flash cotton or flash string in stock, so, but it, they are uh, used in similar ways uh, to flash paper. And uh, again, they're the only products that anyone without a license can buy and use. Uh, one other product that uses uh, flash paper is a flash paper comet, 
or uh, this one's called a fire vault. It's just a cardboard tube built in E-match in the bottom, but it is uh, stuffed with a couple of sheets or one large sheet of flash paper. And when that is ignited, you'll get a fireball uh, shooting out of the uh, cardboard tube. Uh, not very far, uh, I forget the actual, uh, uh, it says 10 to 15 feet. Um, and again, virtually smokeless, uh, no ash, and uh, is not going to put uh, any smoke detection uh, uh, sensors at risk. Very nice. Mines. Mines are the uh, effect that, uh, uh, like birdshot in a shotgun cartridge, uh, we have a wide range of mines available uh, from uh, as low as uh, 20 feet in height to 300 feet in height. So again, be very careful choosing uh, the size mine appropriate for your venue. Obviously, the larger mines are going to be uh, outside. Here we have uh, three different mines. Uh, this one is mine 22 that refers to the uh, uh, diameter of the mine and the height is 30 feet next size up mine 50 50 millimeter in diameter and a height of 80 feet and notice that we do have uh, an arrow in the direction that it functions and a really big one mine 100 100 millimeter in diameter and 200 feet in height. Uh, this is a very, very powerful mine. And there are a couple of other size, 75 millimeter and, uh, and uh, 22 millimeter and so on. But uh, we have the three representative samples here. All the mines have the E-match uh, built in. As virtually all of the pyro items are. Uh, they come already with the E-match attached or built in. Okay, bombshells. Uh, an exact uh, copy of uh, professional fireworks used uh, outside for shows, uh, built uh, essentially the same way. Uh, there is a bombshell inside this mortar tube and when the uh, built-in E-match is ignited, it launches the uh, bombshell into the sky, approximately 275 feet, uh, 350 feet in height, and then it explodes. Now, uh, these can be used in close proximity to uh, audience and uh, downtown areas and so on because they are designed to be uh, virtually uh, debris free. Uh, now, pieces of the uh, uh, spherical casing uh, do come down but they uh, come down within a very small area uh, and they are very small fragments compared to their big cousins the uh, professional fireworks um, but they're a uh, great effect uh, very powerful very uh, punchy and uh, it enables uh, shells to be used in situations where it would be impossible to, to use even 50 millimeter uh, professional uh, shells. This effect is called a mortar hit. Uh, probably the best description is what it would look like if a mortar shell came down and exploded as in uh, the movies. Uh, uh, bright flash of uh, light, mushroom cloud of smoke, and some noise output to it. Um, this one has a cover with instructions that it's to be removed uh, prior to functioning. So the tape just comes off and exposing uh, the uh, cover, which is a uh, plastic, and away we go. Comets. Uh, Available also in a, a wide range of uh, uh, diameters. Uh, the smallest one here, uh, we have uh, 25 foot, suitable for uh, use indoors if you have ceilings in excess of 25 feet. Uh, E-match is uh, built in. Uh, a larger comet, 30 millimeters in diameter. Uh, this one has a height of 200 feet. And a very large comet, 50 millimeters in diameter, uh, 300 feet in height. 
binary powders. Binary powders refers to uh, two different uh, chemicals packaged separately, uh, A bottle and a B bottle, and they are mixed together prior to use uh, to create the effect, the pyro effect that uh, you're looking for. Now, when putting these together, we always mix one bottle into the other bottle. Never try to mix together a half a bottle or, or any fragment or a fraction of the bottle. You have to mix up the complete uh, two bottles together uh, in one go. Uh, so the A bottle is the oxidizer. That's a chemical that releases uh, lots of oxygen when it uh, burns, which provides the uh, proper amount of oxygen for the fuel in the B bottle to uh, burn at the optimum rate and produce the visual effect uh, uh, that you're looking for. Uh, we don't use binary powders nearly as much as we used to and the reason being is that many of the effects that we had to create with binary powders are now available as uh, prepackaged effects. One of the uh, oldest effects is uh, the flash pot using uh, flash powder. Um, flash powder, as we saw in the course, originated as photographer's flash powder and its sole purpose was to produce lots of light, which it does very well. Also produces lots of smoke. Now, uh, a flash pot, uh, it's important that it is very open and very low. You do not want to contain uh, any of these binary powders, especially flash powder or concussion powder, because the more we contain it, the more powerful the reaction becomes and it can become explosive. So with a flash pot, we have a low height and wide open, uh, a wide diameter, and that's to maximize the uh, light output. It's also available, uh, as I said, in prepackaged effects. Here is a, a small micro flash pot available from one of the manufacturers with the E-Match built in. It is just a, a small uh, tube uh, tray uh, that has a certain amount of flash powder covered with the plastic and when we ignite the E-Match we'll get a small uh, puff of uh, smoke and a white flash. But we are going to set this up and uh, put an E-Match into the uh, flash pot, put in our uh, uh, flash powder and uh, do it the old-fashioned way. Now uh, we learned in the, uh, in the course that static electricity is a great hazard and dealing with steel devices we want to make sure that uh, uh, we don't create a static spark. And there have been accidents where just walking across the floor whether it's in a coliseum or a carpet in our, a room where static will generate, uh, will build up in our clothes and touching the mortar will create a spark. So my, uh, my rule when I'm working with uh, mortars is to always bless the mortar first before I load the powder. So by touching it first, I will ground myself and eliminate any static charge that there is. Then I will take uh, uh, my bottle of uh, flash powder that I've uh, mixed up and then I will add it to the mortar. So here I have a, a flash powder that has already been mixed up. So when I go to uh, load it, uh, a standard measurement is capful, and uh, the load can vary from one capful to uh, several capfuls. Uh, directions are given on the uh, the bottle. Uh, today we're going to do probably uh, three or four capfuls, and I would just pour the powder into the cup and then pour it into the mortar and we're ready to go. Concussion. I used a lot in uh, uh, stage effects, uh, rock groups and so on love concussion. A concussion uh, generates not only a loud noise but a very strong concussive shock wave and when you're uh, in front of the stage you do feel that shock wave hitting your uh, in the body um, hence the name concussion uh, now this is a concussion mortar for using binary uh, concussion powder and these binary powders 
are very, very powerful. They've got to be treated with a great deal of respect, and especially with concussion. Now, flash powder is, is very fast, but concussion powder is, is way faster because the particle size is much smaller. And as the particle size decreases in a composition, its speed of uh, uh, burning increases rapidly, and it doesn't get any faster than concussion. It's, it's actually an explosion. Uh, it is so fast. What's very important with concussion is that you don't make a concussion mortar. Extremely important. The reason being is that there is so much pressure um, when this ignites that uh, if it's not a properly designed and manufactured uh, mortar uh, that is built to contain that pressure, you've cre created a grenade uh, and it would be fatal for many yards. So this is available from uh, the manufacturer um, and will last many, many, many firings. And it's uh, just under one inch uh, in diameter sidewall. Uh, and it's a solid billet of steel uh, that has been uh, drilled down to a certain level. Uh, and you can use this with confidence knowing that it has been uh, designed and engineered to withstand the intense pressures from the concussion explosion. Now, uh, a different manufacturer uh, a few years ago had a different formulation for concussion powder. It wasn't quite as strong, and this was their concussion mortar. Uh, as you can see, it's got uh, a much narrower uh, sidewall, maybe uh, a half an inch, compared to the one inch of the uh, the one on the right, if we had, if we use this concussion powder in this mortar, it can shatter this because this is not designed to take this strength of uh, concussion powder. So again, it's very important that you make sure that the device that you are using uh, is designed for the pyrotechnic effect that you're going to be putting into it. Airbursts. Airbursts are effects that are designed to replicate uh, fireworks bursts in the air. Uh, here's one that uh, we've made ourselves. They are available uh, as a manufactured device or you can make them yourselves. Uh, airburst powder is available as a binary powder. So it is mixed together and here we use a little bit of uh, flash paper. Um, and the e-match, we take the square of flash paper, put the e-match in the paper, put in the amount of composition that we're going to use, and then wrap it up around the e-match. And this is suspended from the ceiling. And of course, when the current passes through the e-match, we get our burst. Flame projector. Flame projector produces a column of uh, roaring flame. And uh, the composition used for flame projectors is uh, generally smokeless powder. Uh, smokeless powder is used in, as a propellant in shotgun loads. Um, it's uh, also available to, uh, in gun shops uh, for reloaders and so on. Uh, we can load our own uh, flame projector uh, or very common, uh, we use uh, manufactured uh, flame projectors. Uh, the cover is to be removed uh, prior to ignition. Uh, composition is uh, protected with just a, uh, a small uh, piece of plastic. It won't stop any sparks, uh, but it's just designed to keep the uh, composition from, uh, from uh, uh, coming out. And when the e-match uh, is fired, we'll get a brief column of uh, a flame. Well, this is how we've rigged the airburst. Now, of course, normally it would be a heck of a lot higher, but uh, for the demo, we're just hanging it from a, uh, a speaker stand. Uh, also, we've taken our micro flash pot and we've rigged it uh, vertically so that the poof will come this way. In movie special effects, this might be buried in an electrical panel or, or on a prop. Uh, of course, normally it would be flat on the stage and give you a micro puff uh, upwards, but we've rigged it to, this way to make it more interesting. And over here we have our waterfall gerb that will cascade 
down. Now, rigging our gerbs, our bombshell, our comets and our mines. We have a professional system uh, from Spain uh, with sectional uh, aluminum uh, slats and posts that slide in and then the devices are attached with cable ties. As you can see it's a very very slick system um, and it can even be uh, arced to create a uh, fan effect. But uh, realistically, if you were setting up a gerb for a stage effect uh, for a community theater or uh, your sister's uh, first dance at a wedding, you don't need a, a, a great system like this. As long as it's stable, you could take a, a piece of 2x4, a piece of plywood, and uh, put a screw or a nail into the wood and then cable tie your gerb uh, to that nail or screw. The key is that it's very secure. That's the only thing that uh, you want to make sure. And of course, you want to make sure that the base is large enough that somebody walking by uh, can't knock it over. But, so we're going to, oh, we'll go over here. Ah, shit. Okay. Here is our uh, flame projector and our binary powders. The short one is our uh, flash pot and we have four capfuls of uh, flash powder in this. We've covered it with tin foil because it's a windy day and we don't want the uh, powder uh, blowing around. Um, it's not taped down uh, securely. You don't want to do that. You don't want to uh, add containment to these devices because they it will increase the uh, pressure and increase the uh, the uh, power of the explosion. So this is just sitting on there and will pop off very lightly. And this is our concussion mortar uh, with uh, four capfuls of concussion. You could go as low as one capful uh, to as much as a full ounce of concussion. A full ounce of concussion uh, will crack windows and pop eardrums inside. It's very, very powerful. So with uh, determining the amount of, of uh, capfuls that you want to use in any binary powder, always uh, test uh, uh, outside with uh, extra distance um, in a, a non-performing situation, determine what visual works well and then determine uh, how close your spectators and your audience uh, uh, can be safely and don't deviate from that.